Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing our point and click adventure series with episode 3 of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. If you missed the other instalments please do go back and check them out, the story is a good one. If you're enjoying this series please do drop a like, let me know in the comments if you have played this game or are thinking of playing this game and finally do consider subscribing, it means a lot to me and it really helps the channel grow. Right, so let's get on with it, kick back, relax and enjoy the ride. The unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Oh. Hmm, no one here. I don't think anyone is home. I don't think anyone is home. Nobody home. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Hello? What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Not to say, except don't be sniffing around his lordship's oh. manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. Goodbye. ta -ra. I've stored my case in there. A box within a... I don't wish to carry the... I can't remove the plaque. A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. The door has been boarded up. The building looks like a ruin. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Evans, no. Villagers aren't allowed there. Why not? Don't know. It's just the way it is. Mm. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hello. Good day. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. 
But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? Ha! <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, Pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Excuse me, I found this necklace inside the church. Is it yours? No, Pet. Perhaps someone left it behind yesterday. You keep hold of it for now. I'll ask around at the next service. Are you sure? I trust you. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? Uh... Macbeth. Magnificent guess, Miss Bateman. But I'm afraid that passage is from Richard II. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. Follow me. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? Yes. I sensed a hesitation there. No, I believe in... Come now. I will not bring the fire and brimstone upon you for speaking your truth. Well, I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain.
Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. No sign of life? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. That glove looks familiar. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plough and furrow. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night?
Why didn't he come inside to see me? Slightly damp. I have a similar one myself. So very warm. The trousers feel damp. Freshly hung, or still wet from last night's rain. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. Here, chuk chuk chuk. Don't encourage them. Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're no fun. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? No. You go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Much ado about nothing? Oh dear. I thought that was an easy one. Romeo and Juliet. Of course. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Well, Mr. Shoulder. I'll just have to find Hobbs Barrow myself. The window is much too high up to reach. No sign of any movement. I don't wish to beat my way in. I do not wish to harass the rooster. I'm not sure what that would achieve. This key doesn't fit here. As I trudged back to Beaulieu across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. I should go and meet him at the station. Day. Yes. I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I. I collect them. This one is called an. Um... Ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I. Well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, oh. lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Where is Kenneth? He was supposed to wait for me at the station. 
Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night, what were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. If you say so, perhaps I am mistaken. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. Hmm. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. Aye. I don't remember out. Hmm. About last night? You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. Or well, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I have sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I? Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around me skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time. Gives sweets to the children. Hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. 
I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Good grief! But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Farewell for now. Tara. Mr. Tillett is right there. Day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. It is no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. Ta-ra, lass. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long, though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbour. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. 
Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight, could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye. Funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No. Not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the ploughed furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey, I could go for an ale right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait, do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. The postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Oi, keep away from that door. I promise Mr. Price I keep an eye on his storeroom while he's gone. Okay, so let's bring this episode to a close. We found out quite a lot in this episode. We found out where Mr. Shoulder lives, and he wasn't there, which was a bit of a shock. We also learned more about Thomasina's childhood and her family, and we were also stood up by our assistant. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do drop a like. Let me know in the comments any thoughts you have about this episode, about this game in fact. And do consider subscribing. It means a lot and it does help the channel grow. Right, so I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, take care.